All right, now that I have all my different poster assets in one file, let's go through what they are really quickly. So let me turn them off and then turn them back on. First of all, I have my blank white format. This is the physical format of the poster. It's 16 inches by 20 inches. It can be either horizontal or vertical. That's up to you. Mine's a horizontal format. I then made a duplicate of my blank white background and I filled it with middle gray and then I shrunk it down to create a border. So this is just a stand in for my colored background because I don't want anyone to just have a white background poster. The reason you need a white border is because you cannot print all the way to the edge of a piece of paper. And if you want that look, it has to be printed with the border and then the border cut off. So you always want to design with a slight border. Then I start to find different background textures, colors. Some of you are painting your own, that's fine. Um, here's an example of a way I could paint my own. I could duplicate that gray block. I can move it on top. I can select it all using the magic wand. And then I could actually use not the paint bucket tool, but the gradient tool. Choose a gradient. Let's say just a simple uh, cool to warm transition. Paint it at an angle like that. I could try it a few different times, a few different lengths. Be a more subtle angle. Maybe like that. I can fade that in, right? I can play with the layer styles. I can dissolve it, which breaks it up into individual pixels, like that, which is basically a risograph technique. And if I don't like how it looks that way, I can duplicate it and then merge the two together with command E. And what will that, that will do is it will actually show me what that technique really looks like because the computer gives you kind of a weird more effect when you do that. What's nice about doing kind of a, a glaze like that is then I can play with the hue saturation of it. It just gives me a lot of control of that background. You know, I could shift it into all these different kaleidoscopic effects. So I have that kind of control. And then our campus does have this pretty much fluorescent lime green as its color, one of its colors along with what they call spring blue. That's a hard color to work with, but I can kind of hint at it with my background in these ways. So there's ways to make your background more subtle. Then on top of my background, I don't need my blocking sketch anymore. I have an offset layer. That offset I could add things to. This is a smart object, so it's going to scale up with me. I can add an outer glow to it. I can make that outer glow bigger in size. I can make it noisier to kind of go with the risograph inspiration. I can make it more opaque or less opaque. That helps it stand out on the background, right? And I can do the dissolve instead of normal mode to the whole thing so that it kind of fades in. This is with an inspiration of the actual mechanics of printing. I can even give a more fully opaque outline or outer glow, right? So what can you use to inspire these decisions? I like to look at pre-existing posters and prints. And we were looking at risograph before, but silkscreen is another kind of hands-on way of printing, like small small run prints and it can be produced with digital film work and color separated like we will learn 
This is a very nice poster design, which is just done with, with two inks on cream paper. But where the inks overlap, you can see it gets darker. So kind of seeing the overlay styles there of the layers. Sometimes the text is just cut out from a colorful background. And sometimes you can see the offset here. And this is now what's called half toning, which is something I'll introduce to you next class, which is a mechanical separation. So risograph tends to be pretty random. It's like dissolve. It's called a sand pattern, sand diffuse pattern. But using half tone dots like this to separate is more mechanical. And it can be fun to mix, mix and match those. So with that kind of inspiration in mind, now I can start thinking about, well, there's my type. Here's my spot illustration. Here's my finished line art on top of the spot illustration, which I might want to change to dissolve and take the opacity down on a little bit. So it does a little bit of texture in that, that subtle white internal offset. There's just so much to do. But I'm liking all of that. And then I like how it overlaps with the text. But this text is just solid black. And in all my kind of inspirations, it doesn't really seem like the text is solid black. So let's play with coloring the text now. And I want to brighten that background. So I can always just do a simple texture overlay. Just search for um, like textured paper, textured white paper. And when I'm searching for textured white paper, I'm going to use tools, make sure I see large. And often watercolor is a good a good option or just the high resolution options. This is like a printmaking paper. Make sure there's no watermarks on it. This has watermarks, bummer. That's why Pixabay and stuff is really handy. It will have some, some features like this because they're very helpful. Or free pick. that aren't licensed. And it doesn't need to be huge, it just needs to be large enough. So open image in a new tab, always check it. So that's white with a very subtle texture, so I'm just gonna drag and drop that in. I can always save it. Whoops, where'd it go? Ah, what'd I do? There it is. Save image as. Ah, it's a web photo. That's why. Won't well, let me drag and drop it. So what can I do? I can get the largest screen grab of it possible. It's becoming harder and harder to steal image assets for creative use. Because we know as long as we're transforming this and making our own thing out of it, that we are creating an original creation, not derivative. It's hard to be derivative of just blank white paper. But you'll notice that that paper is already just more interesting than plain empty white. It's just got a little bit of variation to it. And that's the beauty of actual printing. And then I can use that. I can dissolve it with opacity and have that kind of lighten my background. I can play with different layer modes besides dissolve. Pin light's good. Soft light's good.
and you can see kind of those textures all play through in the background. So that might be nice. And of course I can play with the opacity and, and everything with it. So let's put it on dissolve. And then my trick is to duplicate that and then merge them. And that puts the dissolve into what it will actually print like. So that's a, a beautiful lightning with some texture. Uh, look at the complexity of that. Woo, gorgeous. Mwah. All right. So to finish this poster up, I just need to color the type. Now that I kind of know what my background is, I know how my illustration is going to look on it. I get to choose. So I'm going to duplicate my black type, turn off my black type, and I'm first going to try just some simple things like adding a single color overlay. And I can even steal the color from my image. So I'm going to, let's see, cancel, make it 100%. But when I click on the color selector, I can actually just click right on my illustration and pick different colors that will kind of complement it. The green's pretty nice. I'm guessing there's a blue in there that would be nice. Let's pick a green to start with. Okay, so something like that. And that doesn't seem to have enough pizzazz on its own. So let's add a stroke around it. Let's go ahead and make that a, a solid white stroke, like a white offset. Make it on the outside. Just like when we did our color logos, right? I could try it on the center. That's kind of nice. I don't need it quite so thick. I can try a drop shadow underneath the text. Yeah, a nice dark blue would make sense. Let's maybe gray out that blue a little bit. Increase its size, its distance. Keep it nice and noisy. It's like another way of playing with the dissolve is the noise. There we go. Play with the opacity. I like to scale it up on both sides. So there's a lot of subtlety in this poster design. So you can play with the blending modes. Okay, now that I have a color and a drop shadow and a stroke, all that's helping looks very collegial. Maybe I can add a slight gradient to it. And instead of going right to the gradient overlay, I can try satin. And I can try the satin settings. And instead of multiply for it, I can try overlay. And this will give kind of variations to it. I can play with the scale and the size. This will be subtle. But it's going to give kind of a waving variation within the color. And I can decide kind of what color to mix into it. So instead of purple, which really kind of counters it, let me choose something a little warmer. Yeah, like that. So you can see it without it and with it, super subtle, but it does give some color variation within that. 